there. Um, I'm based in New York. I was I grew up in suburban Toronto, but I've been living in New York for the last nine years. And I'm going to talk about uh, my journey with working with data, with um, public available data that is um, provided by transit providers. And so first of all, a few disclaimers. I don't work for the MTA, so I don't necessarily know everything that goes on on how things work with the MTA. But I'm going to talk about what I think how things work with the MTA, with their data, and how they provide it. Um, I, this is a very New York centric presentation. I apologize in advance. Um, this is just data I've been working with and that's all I know. I don't know how other agencies deal with similar data. Um, if anybody has any ideas, feel free to let me know. Um, and also lastly, some of what is presented today is a work in progress. It's no, by, all, uh, by no means perfect, but it shows um, the direction I wanna head at and see what we can do with the data at hand. All right, so first, um, my journey with playing with MTA data came on December 31st, 2017, uh, when the, the um, subway agency in New York, the MTA, finally impl implemented countdown clocks on all the stations and have um, publicly available feeds uh, online. So anybody can sign up for an API key and get data on where trains are. Uh, unfortunately, when that happened, a lot of people realized that, well, we can now see that the trains are running pretty badly. Um, there's been a lot of complaints on Twitter about like, well, trains are very far away from each other. Like in, in this case, it was like 15 minutes away during rush hour, very unacceptable. Um, and the MTA is not necessarily great at communicating when there are delays or when there's really long headways between trains. And we see people complaining about that now. And so my idea back in 2018 was, well, if people can comp are complaining about it because they can see this data, why don't we just automate this process? Why don't we just like pull the data and figure out when headways are really bad? And so I launched um, a website called goodservice.io in 2018 that basically did that. Uh, basically comp compare headways on um, between trains and then also um, compare them with the schedule data to see what, um, what the discrepancy is. And then, so this is an example of that. Um, in this case, we ex normally expect on every um, a train every 20 minutes, and we see there was a gap uh, of 24 minutes. And for that, we should know that. And then other things I had, uh, played around with with this data was um, detecting delays. Um, when you know where the trains are, you can figure out if trains aren't moving. And so if trains aren't moving, we should be notified that that's, the, that's not happening. Um, and then another thing I was working on was uh, trying to figure out travel times. Um, basically from point A to point B on the system, how long it's been taking trains to um, get from these two places and how does that compare to the schedule? Um, and then also this is a very, I think a very unique New York problem um, for those of you who may not be familiar with um, the New York subway um, because it runs 24 hours uh, we, we, we have a lot of um, trains that get rerouted during weekends or overnight um, to allow maintenance to happen. And so the MTA isn't necessarily good at communicating how that happens. And uh, fortunately, based on the real-time data feeds, I was able to figure out uh, when they're happening and be able to graphically map them. And so that you can see uh, how trains are actually running in real time instead of like the routes they normally run on. And so um, uh, some of the examples of like success stories of uh, the project I was working on is that I was able to detect delays before the MTA would tweet about them. And so, yeah, we can, we can get a more proactive way of figure out when delays are gonna happen. Now in um, next year in October, 2019, I launched a website called The Weekendist. Uh, it's basically, building on uh, upon the, the project I've been working on before, basically using um, real-time data and um, creating a real-time map of the subway, um, basically showing when routes, uh, when trains are being rerouted, how they look like on a geographic map. And so in this case, this is this was taken, um, this was a screenshot taken this weekend. Uh, we can see the E train being rerouted to Delancey Street and also um, the E and F trains being swapped. Now, it's funny because the MTA launched their own map um, uh, last year in October 2020. They claim it was like their first of its kind, but I kind of beat them by a year, so I'm just saying. 
But anyway, I've been working a lot with the GTFS RT data, which um, powers the feed. And then I've been thinking about, you know what? I think the way we've been thinking about this data has been wrong. Uh, we make a lot of assumptions that might not actually be true. And so I'm gonna tell you a bit more about that today in my presentation. Now let's, um, before we dig into that, let's talk about how countdown clocks work, right? So on this is what it looks like at a station, right? You see there's a train coming in three minutes, there's a train coming seven minutes. What actually powers that? How do we know? Well, so GT, so um, the, the New York City subway uses GTFS standard. There are other standards out there, but um, a lot of um, transit agencies around the world uses GTFS. And GTFS is basically um, a, a, a standard specification that it came up, well, was come up with, um, that was come up by Google. And so it hooks up really well to Google Maps. And how the standard works is um, every transit agency has one, has a feed or many feeds. So in the MTA's case, they have a feed for every color trains, um, except for the number trains all, are all in one group, which like is not the best way to organize it, but I don't work for the MTA. Anyway, so the feeds are, they, they're updated every 30 seconds and they, contain, they usually contain three things. They contain trip updates, which is basically all the trains that are currently active and where they, and um, their predicted stops service alerts, um, if there are any trains that are delayed, and then also vehicle positions. So more granular information on where exactly the trains are. So the problem with um, standards in software is that people don't actually have to follow standards. And so in the MTA's case, um, they don't actually provide vehicle positions. So that sucks. Um, for service alerts, they only provide that on the number trains. So for half the system, we don't actually know if there's a delay. And so the only thing we can really truly rely on are trip updates. Now, um, to talk about trip updates, this is kind of an example of what a trip update looks like. Um, so in this case, a trip update is basically um, information about a particular train that is currently active. So in this case, we have an F train that is going northbound and it's a snapshot taken at 5.21 PM yesterday. And we can see that it's uh, there's a prediction of it arriving at 7th Avenue station next at 521. And then uh, basically all the stations is, um, this train is going to hit until it reaches the end of the line um, at Jamaica 179th Street at 616 PM. So, OK, so this is the data we get. And, and from that, you can kind of like figure certain things out, right? So if we know that um, it predicts that um, it's arriving at 7th Avenue in 20 seconds or so, we know the train is between uh, 50th Street and 7th Avenue. This we know. Um, we can also detect when delays are happening because if these, um, if the time we see on the list for all the stations that are coming up keep increasing, it means the train's not really moving or moving slower than we expect it to be. And so when we see that, we can determine that a delay is happening. Um, and then also, um, to determine uh, if a train is going slower than normal, what we can do is figure out um, based on the timestamp as well as this um, estimated arrival time next, we can figure out um, if those arrival times for the um, coming stops keep increasing. And so that's one way to figure out if um, trains are running slowly. So given this data, um, this is how the count of clocks are driven. Um, with this feed, we know this train is going to um, arrive at Fifth Avenue at, in one minute, Lexington Avenue in three minutes, Court Square at six minutes, and then Queens Plaza in seven minutes. And that's exactly how countdown clocks are powered. They take the, um, basically a feed of all the active trains that are running and figure out um, by math, by simple math, um, which trains are going to be the next ones and their predicted times. And so, um, I was playing around with um, different apps out there that you can um, plan trips. And I was trying to plan a trip um, from 7th Avenue here to Queens Plaza here on the right side where I circled and what would the results be? And they all have given me pretty similar results. So on transit app, um, it predicts the train's gonna arrive at um, 7th Avenue at 521. It's gonna take seven minutes for me to get to Queens Plaza. Um, with the official MTA app, I get the very similar things. Uh, City Mapper just kind of craps out because it doesn't really know what to do when trains get rerouted in New York. So that kind of sucks. Um, so we can't rely on that. 
But for the most part, we know it's going to be seven minutes um, at 521. And so we also need to talk about how this data is obtained. Um, in New York, we have really old signal systems. So um, currently, the, um, the L train, as well as the 7 train, and the parts of the Queens Boulevard line are the only lines on in the system that use CBT CBTC. So in those cases, we know exactly where trains are based on the signal system. Uh, for a number of trains, they have its own, um, they have its own um, more upgraded signal system than the old um, letter trains, but it's still not automated, uh, but it's, it gives us a better idea of where trains are. For all the letter lines that are not any of the, what I said above, that includes A, B, C, D, up to G and J and Z, um, they use Bluetooth beacons. So basically what happened was um, they installed uh, Bluetooth sensors at the platform uh, of each station at the front end, I guess at the front and the rear. And there are beacons that are attached to each train. And so when a train leaves or arrives at a station, uh, we were able to figure out and detect uh, when that happened. Um, and so, so we know when trains are leaving and we know when trains are um, arriving but we don't really know what happens between stations. We just know when trains are leaving and when trains are arriving at a station. And so that gives us the, basically the arrival time of the next coming station. So in this case, um, we're extrapolating that information to figure out, okay, if the train left the last station a minute ago, it's probably gonna arrive at the next station in one minute. And then how do we get the rest of this data? Like, how do you know that after it gets from 7th Avenue, it's gonna take one minute to 5th Avenue and so forth? Well, I dug a bit on the data and it turns out they really just grabbed that from the schedule. So um, on the right side on this screenshot is transitfeeds.com uh, with the GTFS static file. So this is basically the static schedule that is issued every week on how trains go run and run. And in this case, uh, we see that from Steinway Street to Lexington Avenue 59th Street, it takes, um, it's scheduled to take 18 minutes from those two stations. And if I plug it into Google Maps and Transit app, they both give me 18 minutes. And basically all we're seeing here is that this data is coming straight off from the schedule. And that led me to a, a question. So if we can't trust the schedule to give us the time of when a train is going to arrive to where you're getting on the train, right? Which is basically what the countdown clocks are for. Then how, why are we trusting the schedule to give us the same, the, the data of how long it takes for our train to get from station A to station B, right? If we can't trust it to, a, again, we, if we can't trust the schedule um, to tell us when a train is going to get there for me to board, why are we trusting the same data on how long it takes for me to get to station B? And so uh, I don't have time for a demo because <laughs> I'm running out of time, but um, this is what I was working on. So I've, um, I've launched a new version of Good Service called, and it's just um, right now it's a preview, it's preview.goodservice.io. And basically instead of relying on the schedule data on how long a, a train uh, gets from station A to station B, um, I'm using the average historical data of uh, how long it took the train to run between these two stops uh, for the last hour and basically use a um, rolling average to figure out when the future trains are going to, how long the future trains are going to take to get from one to another. And that's basically the work I've been doing. Um, quick screenshot. Um, so in this case, we see that um, the, the predictions that, that the MTA gives us can really ch change. So in this case, before it, uh, it thinks that this particular train is going to arrive at the station at 638, it actually changed to 631 eventually. And in my prediction, I always um, I was off by just one minute. And so um, same thing here with the C train, um, it predicted 1026, but it actually became 1022. So I was much closer with my prediction. Now, my software is by no means perfect. It's still a work in progress, but we can see there is some accuracy adjustment that can be made that is not available right now with the countdown clocks. And I think, that is it for me. I'm gonna skip that slide because I ran out of time. And if you have any questions, um, these are my contact information. Mm -hmm.